Once this again, conference will now be recorded. Once again, I just want to welcome Sandy Grant, uh, registered holistic nutritionist, to our evening session. And she's the founder of the Durham School of Health and Nutrition. And she is going to do right now part two of what happens when you sleep. And so thank you, Sandy, for being here. It's all it's all yours. And I will, uh, which one am I making the presenter? Um, go to... Did that work? Sandy. You are now the presenter. Wonderful. All right, so I hope you can see that slide that says sleep too. Mm -hmm. Uh, not yet. I don't see screen sharing yet. See that? Okay, we don't so see the screen yet. Back up and make sure that... Maybe do a little bit up here. It's not good. Okay, I may very well go out. Okay, in. no problem. And so I will do that and I'll be back momentarily. In the meantime, yeah, no I do, yeah, I do want you to write your questions down um, because there is, I'm sure, a lot of in a lot of questions you may have, and I hope you do have, because this concept of sleep is so integral to to our existence and survival. And I hope that as we transition through the information very quickly, that you will be fully convinced that <laughs> you do need to get to bed early. So um, jot down those questions as we go along. Absolutely. Um, so Sandy, while you're figuring that out, I just wanna remind people that um, uh, Sandy talked about last week that the ideal bedtime, believe it or not, is 9, 9.30 the latest. And um, I know that seems like near impossible, but the reality is, is that we live in a world today where there's electricity. And I think that ultimately becomes the issue, <laughs> to be honest, um, because when there was no electricity, once the lights were down, uh, once the sun was down, lights were out. You couldn't turn on a television put on anything, you'd have to, you know, make a fire. But, you know, we can turn on a TV, we can turn on the lights in the kitchen, we can go get evening snacks, because we have a plugged in refrigerator. So um, to our detriment, uh, you know, but that makes sense, right? That if we truly were living in a day and age where there was no electricity, as when we were originally designed, um, we would all go to bed at nine o'clock, um, but because we have electricity, we can stay up late, we can go out late, we can drive, we can do all sorts of things. Um, so that becomes the issue. But that is the sleep cycle is, you know, seven to nine hours from about nine o'clock. And we should be early risers. We should be waking up very rested. And as Sandy touched on, I know she'll go through, hormones are balanced when we're asleep. The waste system goes into play. Um, even the brain sheds its waste. I think she touched on that as well. Um, the immune system is strengthened with all the cytokines. Um, so this is a very, very important um, for us to get this kind of repair happening on a cellular level. And uh, this happens when we sleep. Now, she also talked about, you know, you could be getting to bed at nine o'clock, but then you wake up at one in the morning or you wake up at two. You have to get up, go to the bathroom, and then you can't get back to sleep. So interrupted sleep also doesn't allow, allow you to get that deep REM sleep. And that's really where the healing happens. Sandy, are, are you ready? Do I need to make you presenter again? Yeah, you do need now, you to. You are the presenter. You are the presenter. And it's still it's still not yeah it's it's yeah. showing you as the presenter yeah okay let's see if it's possible to go to yeah. um sandy why don't you just um get started email me your slides if that's possible email me your powerpoint and maybe as you're talking through your slides we don't have to have the visual in the beginning 
then I will put your slides up on my computer. Mm -hmm. If it's that simple. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll do that. We prayed before we started, but I forgot to pray for the technology. <laughs> so do you want to just begin, Sandy, or do you want me to continue to? Yeah, um, yeah just give me a minute as I um, email this over to you. Sure, that sounds fine. Um, so for those that have just arrived, I also want to remind you that this session is being recorded. Um, and also, if you have questions throughout about sleep, um, as I mentioned, uh, last week, Sandy talked about the different cycles of sleep. Um, you know, the, the initial cycle of sleep, which is a very light, um, you're, you're, you're lightly sleeping, you can still hear the sounds around you. Um, she also spoke about, um, we talked about white noise, we talked about having music on, television on. So we, we, if your brain is processing, it's never going to properly shut down. So it is important that we're not sleeping with music on, we're not sleeping with noise in the background. And the other thing too is that light also inhibits sleep. So it's very important that if you can't be in a very dark room, that you might have to sleep with a mask on. Um, that would be important. But getting that sleep where it's dark and it's quiet um, is extremely important. And the other thing too, which I'm not sure that she necessarily touched on, but um, is important about sleep is that you need melatonin in order for the body to properly shut down. And light produces serotonin. And for sure, melatonin helps um, produce serotonin and serotonin, melatonin. So you need a good balance of both. But if you are looking at screens before bed, if there's light flashing at the eyes through your devices, if you're looking at a television and there's lots of light flashing at your eyes, if you're in the bright light, your body's not going to produce the melatonin that you need to have a really good night's sleep. So it's important that at least an hour before bed, if not before, we shut down the screens, we turn off the television, we get rid of our devices, we actually open a book instead. And it's okay to have a little light flash, like, you know, the light is on the book. You don't want the light on the eyes. And this becomes an issue with a lot of people. We don't, we don't realize, um, we do not realize because we're so used to computers, we're so used to devices, how much light is actually flashing at the eyes. And again, serotonin gets released instead of uh, melatonin. The other issue with that, of course, is that if you get up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, I can't get back to sleep, and you pick up your device, start flipping through Instagram, start your chances of getting back to sleep are going to be very difficult because again, the light is flashing in your eyes and you're not giving because you're not giving your body a chance to produce that melatonin. Um, the other thing too is that if you don't get enough serotonin in the day, if you're not outside with actual sunlight on your body and, and um, you know, getting that vitamin D, if you're not getting enough serotonin in the day, that's going to inhibit you producing your melatonin at night. So there are a lot of things um, that make up good sleep. And the other thing too is that sometimes the body is also not tired. We're sitting at a desk all day or we're not moving around enough. So when evening comes, the body's not tired at all because we don't have enough activity either. This also becomes an issue. So there's many factors to this sleep factor that we all need to recognize, and I know Sandy's going to talk tonight um, about some of the natural remedies that we can do, but it's extremely important too is our diet and what we're eating. Um, because, you know, I've seen many people, uh, you know, get all these sleep teas and get all these natural remedies, but these are band aids. If we're having a big dinner at night, your body's digesting all evening. It's going to be very, very difficult for it to then try to go to sleep. 
Um, so it's very important that we are also um, allowing the body and the system to rest, the digestive organs to rest at night and not have to be so busy digesting food. Many times we can't shut down and when we're sleeping, we're not getting into deep sleep because your body is so busy. It's busy digesting all this food, taking out this vitamin K and this iron and this protein and sending it to the liver and sending it to the eyes for your good eyesight. And it's like your system's so busy, there is no wonder that we're having light sleep or that we wake up a lot through the night. And then the waste system, right? So we're producing all this water from all of this food that we're eating and then we have to be interrupted to go to the bathroom. So the ideal sleep cycle is that you have your big heavy breakfast in the morning, you have a good lunch, and unless you're working a night shift, you are not necessarily eating at all after about 3 p.m. And in the evening, you're just having some liquids, not a ton of liquids, because then you'll get up all night peeing again, but you're having some liquids, um, like warm liquids, maybe a chamomile tea or a peppermint tea or a, some other kind of tea. And I know, again, I don't want to give it all the way, but Sandy's going to talk about some of the natural remedies. She's, I'm, I'm just going over this because we're having a little bit of technical issues with her screen. But you would want to have some sort of a sleep-inducing tea. Um, and then, again, if you do have bladder issues, you want to drink that at least two hours before you go to sleep and then you are shutting down, yes, my friends, at 9 p.m. if possible. Um, honestly, the closer you get to midnight, you start to release so much cortisol that you actually lose two hours of sleep for every hour you're up past midnight. And your body should start to feel that. You should not be okay if it's 12 o'clock at night. You shouldn't be functioning well. If you're functioning well, you have a major cortisol issue already. So the ideal is that you're getting, um, you're getting in bed by 9 o'clock, asleep by 9.30. And that is, you know, between 9 p.m. and about 1 o'clock in the morning, that's when the hormones go into balance. That's when the immune system and those cytokines start to be produced. Those are your immune fighting um, cells that are so important to help to fight disease. Um, so many people struggling with thyroid issues and reproductive issues. The truth is, is that these are hormone imbalances. And so if you have a hormone imbalance, of course, when are your hormones? Muted, muted. When are your hormones going to be balanced except, of course, while you're sleeping. Hormones aren't going to be balanced when you are busy all day on the computer, washing dishes, making dinner, going to the gym. That's not when your hormones are getting their chance to balance. Your hormones are getting their chance to balance when you are sleeping and the actual physical makeup of the body, it happens between about 9 p.m. and 1 o'clock in the morning. We can't be number one awake during those hours for that to happen properly. And number two, we can't be digesting because the digestive system actually requires the most energy of the human body. So of all your systems, your heart, your endocrine system, the respiratory system, they all require energy, but nothing requires as much energy as your digestive system does. So think about that. And think about the amount of energy it takes for the body to heal. It's a pretty good amount of energy for cells to be produced, for the uh, hormones and the nervous system, the endocrine system to get the right balance of hormones, bring everything to the right place, for the right nutrients. This requires energy. Well, think about if that needs to be repaired, but I have dinner in my stomach, where's the energy going first? Your body is going to make a judgment call. The judgment call is not, uh, I will digest this dinner in two or three hours. Let me first work on this nervous system and this lady's hormones and her immune system. No way. We control the decision that the body's going to make in the sense that as soon as you put food in there, that gets the first priority automatically. And your body and my body only have a certain amount of vital energy in it. You don't have unlimited amounts of vital energy. I feel like that sometimes. 
but I don't have unlimited amounts of vital energy. So what will happen is your body will take that energy and use it to repair the, and use it to digest the food. And whatever energy is left and whatever time is left, that's when the nervous system, that's when your hormones, that's when your immune system gets the work on. And the reality is, is that most everybody, except for those who are on my program, are eating dinner every night. It's no wonder our world is so sick. It's no wonder that, you know, we're having fertile issues, reproductive issues, fibroid issues, and all sorts. It's no wonder when. Uh, you know, we're having these big dinners and we're going to bed late. It's it's a real problem that if we could do things right, not the way Carolyn decides, but the way that the human body was designed, which is why I love the eight laws of health, because I didn't invent them, so I can't take any credit, just a messenger. But if we can eat in the rhythm of the laws of health, it actually follows and flows with the way we were designed and healing happens so rapidly because when you sleep your body does what it's supposed to do heal and repair no food no computer no dishes no kids to chase after no husbands or wives to yell at it's just it's just healing so um, with that being said, I'm just going to open up Sandy's PowerPoint here, and we are going to get you guys um, started on some remedies, because that is uh, very important. And uh, Sandy, you might have to talk through the remedies in the beginning, because I haven't seen the email, so I know you sent it to me, but I'll open it up as soon as it comes through. But I'm sure it's big. So it's going to take a little bit of time. But if you want to take it from there, I'm not sure if you were on. I hope I shared all the right information. Yes, everything was just spot on. Good evening, everyone. And, um, you know, sometimes when we are sitting in anticipation of that, which is perhaps going to be the most significant event of our lives, um, that situation is delayed that experience is delayed and that's what we're, what's happening today um i just finished another presentation there should have been no glitch um, but here we are and so i want to welcome you personally as carolyn said i am um actually more than a, a, a natural nutritionist which is what i really am i'm an educator uh, a natural ed educator and I am enormously happy and blessed to be with you this evening and I hope that the information you're getting is not going to be another um, set of um, a, a, not a bit of information but rather something that is going to change your life because truly it doesn't matter how well we eat it doesn't matter how much water we drink. It does not matter. Um, it doesn't matter how many miles we walk. If we are not in a state of restfulness, we're going to be stressed out and we're going to be walking in circles. We're going to be running fast. We're going to be perhaps even very accomplished because individuals who uh, who work hard tend to be very accomplished. But at the end of the day, what do we have? If we do not have health, we have nothing. And what is health? You can go ahead and chat. That's all right. Put it in the chat if you feel so inclined. Health really is a body, mind, spirit experience. And it can only be achieved when all the laws of our being are working together. And believe it or not, healing begins in a state of, I'm sure you've heard this from Carolyn, rest. We cannot heal unless we're in a state of rest. So we're talking about sleep. 
and possibly even how to induce sleep um, using sleep aids, etc. But what I'd like to impress upon your mind today is that there is no band-aid to good health unless we are working in um, 100% um, 100 agreement and in total obedience with the laws of our being, the body is going to rebel basically like a child who has his or own ideas of what life should be. And it doesn't matter how much you say to the child, walk this way. The child has a mind of its own and cannot be forced. And that is the beauty of having been created with a mind that thinks independently of um, hopefully uh, whatever is around um, him, him or her. But it's a mind that is, believe it or not, um, a, a designed to think a certain way. And when we don't think in a certain way and think in other um, directions or um, conceptions or ideologies or whatever it is, there's going to be dissonance. And most definitely, the body will follow the mind. Wherever the mind is, that's where the body is going to go. So what I want to impress upon you most um, succinctly and most, um, I'm trying not to use the word forcibly, but um, indelibly, perhaps is a better word, is the importance of rest. More than sleep, we need rest. So we're going to talk about sleep within the context of rest, because last time we met, we talked about three words relaxation, sleep, and rest, and they're not interchangeable. They're not interchangeable. Um, but we cannot sleep unless we learn to relax. And we cannot relax unless we learn to rest. And similarly, if we don't sleep, we cannot rest because sleep controls the mechanisms of the brain, which really is the control system of the body. It is the control of the nervous system. And most of us are stressed out. Most of us are anxious. And that is the barometer. How do we know if we need peace? If, I give the answer away. How do we know if we, if we lack sleep? Or perhaps we're sleeping, but not really resting. The bottom line is, and the answer is, we need peace. Do we have peace today? If we're not having peace, um, then we are definitely not resting. And so we cannot heal 100%. So um, do, I, I guess, Carolyn, you are going to be. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, you can see. So I, yeah, I think this is, you yeah. tell me where you need to be. Okay, great. So again, I want you to begin this seminar um, and thank you, Carolyn, for that wonderful introduction. As a matter of fact, I'll just jump over uh, most of what I had to say, really, and get to the antidote. The first place to begin, when you feel anxious, you feel that you're not well rested because you haven't been sleeping, is to, one, stop and pay attention. Ask yourself, why? Are you contributing to the problem? Or is it, is it something that's systemic? Or is there something you can do to, um, to experience good rest? At the end of the day, the good news is that you have the key in your pocket. You have control in your hands. So the first place to begin when we start talking about how to heal, how to rest, is one, take a deep breath. First place to begin. Take a deep breath. Remember, we said we cannot sleep unless we are um, in a state of relaxation, ideally. Now, if we're going to bed and hitting the pillow and going out like light, um, we are in a crisis situation. Um, keep going, Carolyn. You'll see a, a, a sleep two. Um, yeah, keep going until you see sleep two. 
Here we go. Wonderful. So again, as was mentioned, sleep is a vital part of our wake experience. If we're not sleeping, what happens during the wake experience, our daytime experience is going to be significantly altered. Um, and we talked about the learning, the memory, um, the mood swings, the attitudes, the even appetite and libido, all of that is affected by sleep. Next. So how much sleep do we really need? Um, and this might be surprising for some of us. A newborn baby to about two months need up to about 12, eight, 12 to 18 hours. That's a very long time. I'm just going to jump down to, and you can read it um, based on the age as relevant to maybe you have a child you need to, to, um, to make sure that that, that that child is sleeping. Um, but if we could go to from age 12 to 18, we need approximately 8.5 to 10 hours of sleep. So when we start saying we need about eight, uh, seven to eight hours, that is just barely meeting the, the basic requirement. Because remember, sleep is where we sort out. Sleep is where the brain files system appropriately so that they can be easily achieved upon need. Sleep is when our bodies recoup, our, our, our tired and worn out muscles are rejuvenated with fresh oxygen, with proper hydration, with the process of detoxification. Sleep is when the, the, the brain, which does not have a lymphatic drainage system, actually gets to detoxify. So there are some crucial things that happen during sleep that we cannot substitute for during wake time. And it's determined by the body's circadian rhythm, that wake sleep cycle. And the hormone melatonin, as was mentioned earlier, um, go back up please, um, is indeed um, one of those um, significant hormones that affect our ability to cope and to live a, a vibrant and fulfilling life. Look at adults. Um, it says uh, um, seven, seven and a half to nine hours. How many of us are really sleeping nine hours? Um, next. I don't think too many of us are. Um, so very many people are sleeping from sleep apnea, from snoring, um, all kinds of, of uh, sleep disorders that can easily be corrected with the very simple um, information I'm going to share with you just now. Keep going. Okay, keep going. Okay, so let's stop here for a minute. In a nutshell, if you take nothing away from this um, presentation, I'm going to enforce upon you the significance of going to bed at around 9 o'clock that's when our immune system is most um, nourished by the hormones that are being released. And how many of us need to compromise immunity at this point? Absolutely nobody with the, in this whole um, COVID crisis. So we need to shoot for bed at around nine. Now, I know Carolyn mentioned earlier 9.30, but um, one hour, or should I say, yes, one hour between the hours of nine and 10, and 12 is equivalent to approximately uh, two hours after the hour of 12. So you need to get into bed to maximize not only the quantity of, of the sleep in terms of the quality of the sleep, but more so in terms of what is happening, especially to the immune system within those very significant hours. And I will also say this, I've read a report um, where most researchers researchers will say that one hour of sleep before the hour of 12 is equivalent to two hours. A Dr. Neil Nedley, many of you might be familiar with him, his research um, is showing that one hour before 12 is actually equivalent to four hours after 12. And I know most of us are not getting those early, early hour sleep time, sleep time in. So again, I want to impress upon, upon you that by 9 p.m. you should be in bed. And if you're not in bed, you are compromising your body's vital force, and it's only a matter of time before it catches up with you. 
again, quick overall. Um, your room should be quiet because your brain, even though it slows down, um, the, the cerebral cortex to be specific, it will still receive information. Any sound that's coming in is going to stimulate and, and interfere with your sleep brain waves. Okay, so you want to slow things down um, by as little stimulation as possible. As, as mentioned earlier, you should be in a dark room. No, no light, no night light. Just imagine what we do to our babies when we put those night lights in. No light, even a night light can reduce your sleep up to about 10%. It should also be quiet um, and it should be well ventilated. So your window should be cracked open, even in the middle of winter. Ouch. Yes, it can get cool, but just layer up if you need to. And ideally, cross-ventilated. So the air is moving through your bedroom. I recently moved in onto a property and loved the property. But my bedroom windows could not open because the windows are made of um, solid wood. And in the summertime, the wood swells up. So they couldn't open. And I felt it dearly. When you start sleeping with fresh air, you will feel invigorated and restful when you get up, significantly more so than if you were sleeping in an airtight or a stagnant room. And those are the cardinal um, things to do when it, or should I say sleep aids. Everything else is just icing on the cake. If you can do these four things, I can guarantee you, your health will improve dramatically. All right? Next, and we are moving quickly. Um, now let's look at these, go next please. And I'm just gonna go over some of these very quickly. Um, as Carolyn mentioned, um, we should be going to bed, I believe she said three hours and that is correct. I would even dare say up to four hours, um, knowing that um, that fifth hour we need to detox. All right, so anywhere from about three to four hours, to four or five hours, we should be going to bed after our last meal, which means we should I was, be eating. I was more. saying 3 p.m., Sandy. I said last meal, 3 p.m. I didn't say three hours before. Last okay. meal, 3 p.m. Wonderful. But definitely, you should give yourself up to four to five hours before you go to bed after your last meal. So most of us should be eating two meals a day. And if we're eating a third meal, it really should be a light meal. Of course, it should be relative to your activity so and your personal need. But most definitely, as was mentioned before, you need to go to sleep on an empty stomach because otherwise, again, your stomach is going to be working while you're trying to rest and your body will not experience that full rejuvenation as is necessary. The toxic buildup when we are not, um, when that, um, when we're not resting, is very significant because every cell in your body um, eliminate wastes. And when that waste is not removed in a very timely manner, it will create what's called bioaccumulation of toxins. And that is the chief cause of inflammation. And I can speak to you about any disease, including cancer. And at the end of the day, despite the fact that we know what cancer is, which is mutated cells, um, um, cells mutating uncontrollably, at the end of the day, everybody has cancer cells. So what is the difference between those who succumb and those who, who do not? It really is our ability to remove um, toxins out of the system to prevent inflammation. Inflammation is our key culprit. And so the dietary that we're eating should be anti-inflammatory. All right, so anything that is gonna promote inflammation in the body is going to create um, system toxicity, it's going to create um, a biochemistry that is going to be highly debilitating um, and it's going to affect your quality sleep. Because when the brain is toxic, when the brain is tired, you will not rest well. Now, so your dietary has to be supportive of good sleep. What you eat, when you eat, highly significant to good sleep. Secondly, 
um, exercising. When you ex exercise, you are oxygenating at a level that you typically wouldn't if you weren't um, doing deep respiration and inhalation, exhalation and inhalation. When you bring a lot of oxygen um, into the body through exercise, you actually help to calm and soothe the nerves. So I can tell you to go and get um, a bottle of something off the shelf. But all you really need to do is to make sure you're exercising, preferably outdoors. Preferably outdoors, where again, the air is open. And again, ideally in green space. Living in the country is always ideal. But, but sleep is significantly dependent on the quality of air we breathe in. And um, it is significantly enhanced in the process of exercising. Exercising also helps to increase HDL and lower LDL. So for those individuals who might be snorers or who might be sleeping from sleep apnea, um, where you're losing oxygen and, and that's why you, 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 you jump out of sleep um, ever so often, uh, on average, you, you'll stop breathing about five to six times every hour um, while you're sleeping. You are ox uh, you're actually, um, going to be oxygen deficient. It's going to affect your entire being. And all you really need to do really is exercise. Sometimes it's affected by the, the high triglyceride levels in your blood, the cholesterol levels in your blood, and um, fatty tissue buildup. Just by exercising and losing those extra pounds is going to actually um, reverse that sleep apnea or, um, or, or, or uh, situation that causes snoring. Um, um, or insomnia in whatever capacity. So exercise is very vital to making sure that we um, we we are um, maintaining good weight control, so that it doesn't block the air passages and and create sleep disorder. Okay, moving very quickly. Next slide. Water. There's a book. That's called You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty. Enough said. Most of what we experience in terms of disease condition, including sleep apnea and, and, and the like, sleep disorders, can be attributed to dehydration. And I really don't have the time to break it down to the science, but just know that the body is significantly made up of water. Blood itself is 92% water. Our bones are about 22% water. So when, and the brain, which is what controls sleep activities, is 85% water. So when we are dehydrated, it means um, the molecules, um, the, the, the nerves, the cells are not able to function at a capacity that they should be. And so simply by drinking water, now you can't drink water just before you go to sleep or else you're gonna be up in the night going to the bathroom. You wanna start drinking well in advance, maybe a, a, a three, four hours prior. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're well hydrated. And, and time doesn't permit me to say much more outside of the fact that you do need to make sure that you're getting your adequate amount, which is your weight in pounds divided by two, divided by eight, will tell you how many eight ounce glasses you need on a daily basis. So make sure you're well hydrated Without that water, you are, you are um, your brain cannot um, um, go through the, the, the intricate processes that it does, especially when we're sleeping. Um, and with respect to the external use of water on sleep, if you find yourself um, stressed and you can't get to bed, and when you get to bed, you can't sleep, a good soak in a warm bath of Epsom salt is always a good antidote for, the, for that. Um, about a cup or two of Epsom salt poured into some a wa warm water, as warm as you can tolerate it, um, is very, very relaxing. Of course, you can use the aromatherapy and those kinds of things to add to the water um, to make it a little bit more calming. More often than not, we can't sleep because our, we are just, our muscles are tense. We're stressed, we're worked up, we're anxious. And so this Epsom salt is always good to literally relax and loosen the muscles so that um, um, 
you, you, you can go into that state of relaxation and then sleep. It is also good to open up the blood vessels so that you can increase circulation so that your brain can be properly oxygenated and, um, and, and the blood is circulating well. It also helps um, the heart because as we know, most of the time we're sleeping, um, our, our, our heart rate slows right down into that delta wave, slow heart rate. And believe it or not, during uh, that phase of sleep, which is um, stage three, many people suffer heart attacks because the heart rate slows right down. Um, so by hydrating well before we get to bed, it's going to help to prevent those kind of occurrences from happening. Um, you may also want to look at, uh, if you're gonna drink in the night before you get, before you get to bed, uh, catnip. Um, a strong growth of catnip is a wonderful sleep aid. Um, as was mentioned, chamomile, hops, valerian, a combination of these things. What I find also very useful is a product that's called Calm. Some of you might already be familiar with it. It's really just magnesium citrate. And it will significantly relax the muscles so that you can get a good night's rest in. All right, I'm not a person to promote products, but elements, um, certain minerals, they can definitely calm and relax the muscles so that we can sleep well. Um, and um, uh, sunshine, how does sunshine affect sleep when we're just told that the room has to be extremely dark, pitch black dark? Well, believe it or not, when we um, are out in the sunshine in the daytime, it stimulates the secretion or production of serotonin. And serotonin being a precursor to melatonin um, is necessary in the daylight hours so that when um, we go to sleep at nights and the body is, um, is needing a, a strong um, secretion of melatonin, it has the raw material that it needs to produce that melatonin, which is what helps to determine our, our sleep-wake cycle. So while melatonin helps us to rest and relax, our serotonin um, levels must be up during the day for the melatonin to get its raw material to do its job. And it's a serotonin that wakes us up. It is responsive to light, whereas melatonin is um, secreted in pitch black darkness in the room. So these two hormones, actually, sorry, um, um, uh, yeah, hormones or neurotransmitters, um, that same thing, technically, um, they work um, along with each other. And the other um, neurotransmitter that you need is tryptophan. So I'm telling you these words so you can look for foods that are high in levels of tryptophan, serotonin, melatonin, so that you can sleep well. You have the raw material in your nutrition to produce, for instance, bananas, high in tryptophan, oats, high in tryptophan, um, soybeans, high in tryptophan. And you can continue to, to, you know, to just do your research and see what it is that can help to promote um, the production of these various um, um, these chemicals in the blood. You should also know that these are proteins. So you need a good store of protein um, to sleep well, believe it or not. And remember, you know, when in the olden days, they used to say, if you can sleep well, drink a glass of milk, it's the protein. And of course, the milk sugar, because the brain does not hold its own energy. It has to be supplied on a minute to minute basis. It has about a three minute um, supply, but after that, it needs to be constant in the blood. And that's why when we go to sleep, while our stomach needs to be fairly empty, there needs to be good fiber in the diet because good fiber is also going to help to make us have a good um, time release um, glycemic um, level throughout the night. So we need good sugars, um, healthy sugars, not added sugars, but wholesome sugars are natural in the foods, the fruits, etc. The carbohydrates, they all break down to glucose. And that's what the body needs to sleep well. Because remember, the other organs rest, but the brain is always working, especially that limbic system that is responsible for sleep. Um, 
So you need good carbohydrates in your diet, good complex carbohydrates, and you need good proteins in your diet for you to be able to um, maintain these, um, the presence of, of, of the neurotransmitters. Air, as was mentioned before, sleep in a well-ventilated room in the evenings. And this is something I really enjoy doing. As the sun is setting, I love to go for a little stroll down the lane. And just deep breathe and look at the sky and, and just clear my head of all the stresses of the day. And I find that really not only aids digestion, but it puts me into a sense of calm. So um, going for an evening walk around the block, maybe just even go out on your veranda, your deck, into your backyard and just deep breathe. Just mm -hmm. slow down the breathing. These things are so foundational and so even elementary. But believe me, there is no sleeping pill on the market. There is no natural remedy that is packaged that is going to be more effective than these incredible um, lifestyle adaptations. So I just want you to start processing and see how you're going to work through your day, how you're going to rearrange things so that you can get these simple tips in um, and be benefited in remarkable ways that will literally change your life. And how much is it going to cost? Zero. And lastly, I want to get to, um, we talked about temperance. We didn't talk about temperance, but temperance is simply this. Can anyone, um, can anyone, and, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll just perhaps leave that at the end for you to ask um, questions, but um, what is temperance? The typical response is it's moderation. It is not moderation. I see a light going off, and I, I'm just so eager to see you and to talk with you. I'm such a chalk and talk person, but I'm so th thankful for technology that we can do this despite the fact that we can't meet in person. I just want to say this to you. It's not moderation. And you cannot tweak the bad and expect it to produce good. It may hold up for a little while, but eventually it's going to break. So temperance is to abstain from anything that is harmful, anything, and to do judiciously or moderately that which is good. In other words, even the good things can kill you. You need to be moderate in your application. So what I'm saying to you is be very thoughtful. Think about cause and effect. For every effect, there is a cause. If you're feeling whatever, you're going to have to ask yourself, what's causing that problem? And if you don't get to the cause, you'll never really solve that problem. You can band-aid it. You can mask it and get away for so long. But really, you're not getting away. Because all it's really doing is teaching you how to be... Um, how to work against yourself, mm -hmm. how to work against your own happiness. And it's just a matter of time before it becomes painfully obvious. So I'm going to encourage you. These laws, you probably know them inside out, but you really don't know them until you start living them. And they are powerful in their results. You cannot improve on God. And it's the laws of our being. It's the laws that govern us. Can't change our DNA. I mean, we can get into a whole discussion on that. But what is in the DNA is the law. And the law demands certain um, do's and don'ts. And if we don't comply, we're going to find ourselves coming up short. So my final um, presentation, should I say my final mention to you, um, the, the thing that I like, I'd like to leave with you is, what is the purpose in life? What is the purpose in life? And perhaps we could go to the next slide. What is the purpose in life? Because honestly, if we're not fulfilling the purpose for which we exist, we are going to be stressed out. We are going to come up short and we're going to be miserable. And many of us are living lives um, that are distressed because of relational problems. 
we will not be able to sleep if our brain are anxious. You know, I remember um, Oprah Winfrey many, many years back. Um, I was watching a, a talk show with Oprah Winfrey and um, Will Smith. And she said to him, um, um, I cannot remember the, what the question was, but his response to the was, um, I don't sleep well at nights. And she said, why do you not sleep well at nights? And he said, because I'm worried about counting or losing my, my wealth. So he's up in the night worrying about what he needs to do next to make sure that he keeps the wealth that he has amassed intact. And his, Oprah Winfrey said to him, um, what do you mean? You're so wealthy and you are count up nights counting, you know, how much you have. And his wife sitting beside him said, yeah, it's true. Will Smith is up in the nights counting how much um, he's going to lose or going to make friends. It doesn't matter who we are. It is going to destroy us if we are not purposeful in what we are doing. And many of us are anxious because of relational problems. If we experience things like guilt, um, if we experience things like unforgiveness, um, you know, there's that, that brother or a sister or a, a parent or whoever, a significant other who we're not at peace with. My first recommendation to you is don't wait for them to come and say sorry. You go to them. And even if they're the perpetrator, if they're the one who offended you, you go to them and say, sorry, I'm so sorry that you're not, that we're not, um, we're not getting along. Not your fault, but you're going to go and say sorry anyway. Because if we go where to go and say, I'm sorry, you hurt me. Um, the person's going to take the defense. If you want peace and you should, you need to go and say, I'm sorry you're hurting. Because you know what? You're hurting and they're hurting. And many times we have distrustful lives um, because of brokenness. We are broken, those around us are broken, and there is no peace. We need to make peace or else we'll never be able to rest well. And remember, the objective of sleep is rest. And we were created to actually rest in the one who knows more than we do. And I'm comforted in that because I know I'm not the, 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 you know, the only one who is fighting this battle. I can actually take comfort in one who's bigger than myself, who's mightier myself. And so I have a bodyguard, not only a physical bodyguard, but a mental bodyguard to give me mental peace. So that I don't, um, I don't have to live in, in in a state of unrest. So my 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 um my challenge to each of us is to identify what it is that's causing us to become stressful, what it is that's causing us not to sleep. Um, take inventory and um, find out, identify what those areas are, and then address them. Um, Carolyn is there to provide that support. I will even offer myself um, uh, the, the, you know, I'd be more than happy to walk you through situations that you may be facing that you may be challenged in overcoming. There's always help. There's always hope. So I want, again, I want to ask you to be honest with yourselves. Are you happy? Do you have peace? And if not, um, how do you do that? Because unless you have peace, you're not going to sleep well. And my antidote to everything else is to pray. Pray, 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 pray. And um, at the end of it all, prayer works. So I'm going to leave you um, on that note. One last point. It was Mark Twain who once said, actually Augustine, um, the philosopher, once said, our hearts are restless until we find rest in him. And Mark Twain um, said, um, there are two important dates in our lives. Does anybody know what those dates would be? Remember, 
there's a purpose in life. What is your purpose? What is my purpose? Mark Twain said two important dates, the day we were born and the day we understand why. Why were we born? Why were we brought into this world? We need to know. Because if we don't, we're going to walk in circles. May God help us as we learn to look to him and live. At this point, I want to thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you. I do have a final announcement at the very end. But Carolyn, if it's um, permissible at this point, I'd be more than happy to entertain questions. Sure. Yes. Thank you, Sandy, very much. And I know that... Um, Many people are probably like, as you mentioned, Sandy, uh, just, you know, well, what's the pill I can take? What's, what's the best supplement on the market? Should I take a melatonin or should I take a magnesium? And um, for those who, I don't know everybody who is here tonight, but for those who do watch my YouTube videos, I always say that supplements are never the answer. Um, they bring speedy healing for a short period of time, but they're really just band-aids. Our lifestyle and how we live and what we do. And, and you know, they seem so simplistic. Go outside, get some sunshine so your serotonin can be produced so it can help produce your melatonin. Open up your room, get some fresh air, sleep in the dark. Stop stressing about things and stop eating late. And, and so um, all of these things seem very simplistic, but I'm going to tell you as a nutritionist, and Sandy, you've been doing it for longer than I have, it actually works. I, I don't have to have supplements for you on the program to help you sleep. I get you to truly follow the laws of health and all of a sudden everybody tells me and I'm sleeping deeper and I'm waking up rested. It actually works. So if you have any questions, our chat's been a little quiet. So I think people either have received all the information they have uh, needed or, um, you know, maybe they just really don't have any questions. Um, but I also, uh, before we go, I'm going to let Sandy give her announcement, but I also just want to remind you that Sandy is the founder and director of the Durham School of Health and Nutrition. Um, so in just one short year, uh, part-time study, you can become a certified holistic nutrition as well. Again, I don't know the exact designation that they give, but you can become a professional nutritionist, I will say that. And you may not want to make this a career for yourself. Uh, you may just want to learn more about the human body and to learn how to do some natural remedies for your own self and your own family. Um, for myself, before I became a nutritionist, I had studied a lot of natural remedies and I never had to give my kids Tylenol or, or penicillin or anything like that because I learned the natural remedies and what a difference it's made now that they're young adults. So um, this course is amazing. Um, it changed my life personally and it also helped me to change so many lives of others. Uh, so I do want to uh, just encourage you uh, to you can go to uh, Sandy if you can just put in the chat the website I believe it's uh, dshneducate.com but if you can put in the chat the actual um, website people can check it out and if you want to call Sandy to get more information about the program um, you can also do that and there's many students that go through the program that are also financially strapped and if you have it impressed on your heart to make a donation to the school she can help other students um, go through the program. So um, we have a good number of people on here, but I still don't see any questions. Does, I, I put, um, Sandy had talked about tryptophan. She also talked about calm. She also talked about, um, she also talked about um, the water. So I put the, your weight divided by two divided by eight. So I did make some notes in there. Um, but does anybody have any questions on sleep at all or anything about what Sandy was talking about or myself in the beginning? Um, some One question that was mentioned, which I addressed to the person privately, but was just saying, because I had mentioned to have a bigger breakfast and a good lunch and a super light dinner, and the person um, was just sharing that they get very nauseous if they eat in the morning and they just don't have an appetite in the morning. And I hear you because I definitely lived with family members that had that. But when you stop eating at night, you generally get hungrier in the morning. So if your last meal of the day is like two or three o'clock in the afternoon, you generally wake up hungry. 
Um, and even if you're not hungry right at seven, six, or eight o'clock in the morning, as long as you eat by 10 o'clock, generally, you, that's, a, that's a long stretch. Uh, it's great to fast um, for that length of time, but most people are not hungry in the morning because they've had dinner at night um, and they also didn't sleep fully. So it takes a bit of training, but if you can do that, you definitely will wake up a little hungrier. Um, but other than that, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Uh, maybe there is one more. Um, okay, so um, Sandy, do you want to just go ahead with your announcement? And then we can close things up unless anybody else has any more questions. Okay. So very quickly, um, for where we are, I'm getting a flood of calls from information from people saying um, I have to quit my job I have to quit my job what do I do I don't know I'm being sent home without pay um, there are a lot of people who are not able not willing to do a vaccine uh, take the, uh, the vaccine and so there's a, a an, an army of individuals who are now unemployed or going to be unemployed and they're calling because they want to be trained. They see this as an, a, a possibility of earning an income and not just earn an income, a viable income, but more so um, to be able to help people who don't have access to the resources of healthcare as we once knew it to be. And even then it wasn't ideal. So um, there is an incredible amount of people who are now looking at cross training um, for health reasons. As well, as well as for financial reasons. Our office administrator actually was, her husband was sent home to prepare funeral arrangements. She has to go sell and had gone into a coma for a month, for a week, sorry. And when she came out, it, her situation was so grim that she had no hope. Um, she had to be put on cancer drugs that would cause her hair to fall out. All kinds of things were going on. And she said, I cannot do that. I cannot live like this for the rest of my life. She came to us, same program that you do with Carolyn, and her life has, she has not had an attack since, and that was about seven, eight years ago. She now um, is doing it not so much because she wants to earn, but because she understands the value of this information and the training that literally saved her life. She is now excited about um, communicating the same information to others. So if you are interested in a career or, or just, just having the knowledge for personal use or for um, earnability, please give us a call. Um, you, I, I, I put the, number, the email in the chat, info at the SHN education. That just, there's an e, a C missing, it's education. Info at the SHN education.com. This coming Sunday, we're actually starting a masterclass cooking, a cook along with functional nutrition. Um, so um, it's a 10 session um, course. It's a certificate course that will go towards the diploma if you so choose, um, but you don't have to register into the diploma. Just that um, course in and of itself is a standalone. Uh, just to understand nutrition at its molecular level, just to understand. Um, how to make bread without yeast, um, how to understand the science of nutrition is what we would like to offer you. And so give us a call, find out more about it. I wish I had um, my screen up um, so you could see the flyer and get more details, but don't hesitate to let us know. If you have any questions, this coming Sunday is actually free. So for any of you who would like to attend, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to send you the link. It is free. It's from 10, around 11.30 until 1.30 in the morning, uh, morning, mid-afternoon, early afternoon. And we'll be more than happy to share with you some beautiful um, um, recipes. And by the way, there's a free cookbook um, and a nutrition workbook um, that's a part of the program. And we're just excited about it and hope that each and every one of you will take advantage and come and share in this incredible learning experience with us. So again, thank you so much for this time. Hello. Thank you hello. for having me. Hello. Hi. Yes, hello. Hi. Hello. Good evening. 
Could you kindly go over that um, information, this, the site for me, please? Yes, the, the website is www.dshn, which is short for Durham School of Health and Nutrition, education.com. S D S H H N N N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy. Two N's? Edu no, sorry, it's D S H N. Okay. Mm -hmm. Education. Okay. Dot. Dot. Hmm. I lost you. No. Education dot. Dot com. Com. But you, okay. yes, you can email me directly at info at bshneducation.com. Oh, sorry. You know what? The, the website is incorrect, Caroline. Caroline, sorry. Um, the, the website is educate. www dshneducate.com educate and the email is education.com info Edu at dshneducation.com give me a call i'll be more than happy to um to answer any further questions you may have um, on this topic or about the school itself and your opportunity to become a part of a necessary um uh, learning experience okay so Thank you. What, is, what is your number to call you 289 289 387 387 0414 0414 thank you so much you are welcome sorry about that lost connection but thank you very much guys have a really good night sandy thank you so much such a blessing and um we'll see you again soon next week look out for the next seminar guys have a good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.